Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Trending Reviews. So this is my XC90, the Volvo R Design Edition. So I'm going to give you a bit of a driving performance overview to see how it performs when you're actually driving it in different types of drive modes, on the road, if I feel the bumps, what the suspension is like. So let's just get straight into it. Hello, how'd you do? I'm not broken, I'm just split in two. Hope you're fine, ain't got time. Right, so let's go ahead. Turn the car on. And let's start making a move. So, just to start off, the car itself is a 2 litre diesel. It does have 230 brake horsepower. So, it's quite powerful. But I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a little bit of a driving performance to see how it looks. So, reversing out. Now, the camera on the rear parking sensor is really high quality there you can see my Range Rover there as well parked up so just heading out it's very smooth right so putting it into drive nice smooth acceleration so when I'm driving an automatic car it doesn't really you don't expect it to give you any sort of jerking when you're driving I've driven automatic cars before in the past where they've just basically on changing gears automatically itself it does give a little bit of a jerk but this one seems to be okay very smooth on the roads I'm not really feeling any bumps or anything like that one thing I really like about this is the fuel efficiency on this car as well so you get about 45 miles per gallon provided that you're driving on eco mode I will be covering a little bit on the different drive modes on this car as well so I'm just heading out to fill up the fuel put some more diesel in here and uh, we'll uh, test out the acceleration alright guys so let's check out the uh, different drive modes so eco you'll get the most efficient drive you will start and stop when you're at traffic light and you let go of the brakes. If you go into comfort, it's going to adjust the suspension accordingly to the terrain of the road so you feel like it's the most smoothest ride of all. So that's the default one that I was using right now. Dynamic gives you a bit more of an acceleration boost so I will try that out now. Off-road obviously, I won't be taking it off-road today but you can go onto different terrains, forest roads, go through a little bit of like lakes or something like that. And you'll also be going through sand and mud, stones, that kind of stuff. So I will be going now on dynamic mode to see the performance on it. So let's go ahead and do that. So right from the start, I can see once I let go of the brake on dynamic mode, it gave a little bit of a faster push when uh, I was accelerating. So I can imagine how much the pickup would be as well. So 230 brake horsepower. If you go for the T5 petrol version of this car, it goes up to 400 brake horsepower which is really strong so I'll take it on to an open road in a second now it does 0 to 60 in about 7.1 seconds obviously this isn't the fastest kind of sports car you've seen but for an SUV that's pretty good so I will be going on a 70 mile per hour motorway in a second so I'll accelerate right let's test the uh, acceleration boost if I do put it into sport mode on my Range Rover it would also do a similar thing but nonetheless it's doing an excellent job now that is only from just the uh, dynamic mode on the driving mode on this car but in the settings on the screen if I turn on sport mode that will give me an even bigger boost of acceleration as well so I will go ahead and turn that on and that would allow me to use the uh, shift pedals here behind the steering wheel so I'm on 30 Boosting 70. That was an awesome acceleration. 
wasn't the fastest acceleration that I've had on a car, but nonetheless, it's had a really good boost, good pickup, and I didn't feel the car was shaking at any point as well. It was stable, it was strong, and I really felt comfortable in the boost as well. So it made you feel a little bit safer when you're accelerating at that speed. You also have other little features like the lane assist where it vibrates the steering wheel a little bit when you're swaying across lanes without indicating. This feature here called cross traffic alert. This is pretty cool as well, so if you're at cross junction, the car will detect that there's traffic coming from various different sides. So it gives you a little flashing warning on the windscreen above with red lights, and that will indicate, you know, just to be careful that there could be cars coming up from various different directions. Distance alert is really good in the sense that it will tell you ahead if there's an obstacle coming, and it will tell you to slow down because your speed might not be uh, slow enough to actually stop before you actually hit that object coming ahead of you. Of course the start stop technology is great, it's in most new cars nowadays so the car will turn off. Now the start stop I've noticed as well is a lot quicker on this car than my Range Rover Velar and it's just so smooth you don't really hear it, it's quite silent as well so that's a really good benefit. So other features on here as well, you have the uh, blind spot assist which basically lights up the side mirrors to see there's an obstacle coming that you might not be able to see in the mirror as well. Speed sign assist, so that gives you warnings of the uh, speed limits on the roads where you're maybe not familiar with. Cornering lights is also good, so obviously this is an SUV and because of the height of the car, the size of the car, you might not be able to see maybe where the pavement cuts off or if there's an obstacle in the road. Maybe there's an animal that's trying to cross. So this gives you lights just to indicate that there's something there that you might hit and you want to avoid damaging your tires or your bumper or something like that. And so that really covers all of the features on the driving. So from my point of view, I think this car is really smooth. For me, it's the perfect family car. It's got tons of space. The comfort you get when you're driving, especially on long road trips, you go on with kids and so on. I think it's just going to be so much better than maybe having a smaller car which has the same sort of features. So I think the size of this car, the weight of this car plays a lot in its comfortability when you're driving. Performance wise, it's got really good smooth pickups. Going over potholes, speed bumps, I feel it a lot less than actually in my other car. So the Vlad that I have, it does detect and you do feel a little bit more on the speed bumps. Here you feel a lot less, so the suspension is a lot better as well. So that's pretty much it guys. For me, I would give this driving experience on the XC90 a strong 9 out of 10. There's a lot of reviews out there online which have said similar things. So for me, it's been a great experience. I hope you guys have found that a little bit useful as well. So if you have any questions that you'd like to know, then uh, do drop a comment below. Otherwise, I hope you subscribe. I hope you like the video. And I will catch you guys at the next one. Take care.